right. Welcome, everyone. We are covering 1 Corinthians chapter 12 this evening, and it's another great one. So let's jump, jump on in. Verse 1. Remember, this is Saul speaking, and he's speaking on spiritual gifts and unity. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. So you'll remember that a lot of the Gentiles in that time were heathens, and they did, they'd carve little idols, and they would worship them and it was ridiculous and we look at that and we think it's ridiculous but prior to becoming believers and even as current believers some people struggle with this being given over to idols useless things that aren't alive like our father could be money it could be power it could be your job it could be lust it could be all kinds of things that become your idol and we all need to be very cautious of that but when we become saved we become filled with the spirit, led by the spirit, and we develop this loving relationship with our savior, and it's a beautiful thing. Verse three, therefore, I make it known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So, you cannot be truly saved and say anything blasphemous about our Savior. It's not in us to do that. And you can't proclaim that Jesus is Lord and, and mean it if you aren't filled with the Spirit. Verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, Jesus in Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 9, says this. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And that's another beautiful thing. Verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. God wants us all, each one of us, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he wants us to use these precious gifts of the Spirit. It's there. We just have to ask. Verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all have been made to drink into one spirit. For in 
fact, the body is not one member, but many. Okay. This is where he's trying to get them unified. All Christians together, each one of us, we all make up the church. Despite being split up into different denominations and different churches, we are, each one of us, saved by the same Savior, Jesus Christ. We all take communion in his name, remembering his great sacrifice for us. We're all given the order to go and make disciples and share the good news. The mistake is we tend to see ourselves as different, better, more correct in our interpretation of scripture. Saul is trying to stress the importance of unity of Christians to the early church who were very divided and to us today as we are very divided. Verse 15, if the foot should stay because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? And I love how he, he takes this simple example of using the actual physical body as an example. And it's like, we can't just all be the eyeball. Maybe we all want to see everything, but we can't all be the eyeball. So we're all gifted differently and we all have different things. And without each one of our different special gifts, the body doesn't work. The body needs every single one of us exactly the same. He's really trying to hammer this home. And it's such a beautiful metaphor, the way that he uses the body. And he continues, verse 20. But now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor and on our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, no splitting but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So Saul's letting him know that each member is equally important despite his gifts and his job in the church. So someone who is tending to the church and keeping it clean is equally as important as the lay leader who leads the service, who is equally as important as the folks who greet people coming into church, making them feel welcome, who are equally as important as the people who bring in the goodies for fellowship after service, who are equally important as the pastor who gives the message and so on. You can see each person plays a different part in the body, but they are all needed and all very important and all necessary verse 27 now you are the body of christ and members individually and god has appointed these in the church first apostles second prophets third teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helpers administrations varieties of tongues are all apostles are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. So God wants each one of us to seek after all of those beautiful gifts. 
God wants to bless us with these, and he wants us to use these gifts to bless others and to draw people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. But how does that happen? By asking God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. By asking the Spirit to guide you and strengthen you and bless you with these spiritual gifts to help others and your church. By spending time studying his word. By doing all of these, all of us, everybody here, anyone listening, can strengthen our gifts and be better servants. <sighs> all right. Would anybody like to pipe in, share an insight? Well, can I just say one little thing? <laughs> Please. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, uh, I think it's the fantastic when it states that uh, it is, uh, we shouldn't stop with enjoying our own relationship with God. We're supposed to share it and not, not, I don't want to use the word pride. I'll strike that. But you need to share it and you need to share it with your fellow Christians. And so when a person starts thinking that they're, they're more a Christian than somebody else, that, you got a problem. That's but right. We have to share, and if we can help other people in their lives, whatever it is, and the gifts are something different, and not a person that has a particular gift isn't better than the other person. That's right. We're all in the body of Christ and support Christ to the church uh, as an individual, and we contribute to the body of Christ and we contribute to the church. So I just think it's uh, real important <laughs> to get involved and help people. In my case, I don't have a lot of gifts, but I can help people in some ways. And that's what I want to do. And so I try to find ways to help people that either support or whatever I can do for them. So anyway. You know, Bill, I think helping <laughs> is one of the most fantastic and overlooked gifts ever. Because with, with your help and with your kindness that you offer people, you don't know how important that is and how much of a difference that makes in people's lives. That means yeah. a lot more than, than a message or than some cookies. It's for some people, you know, they desperately need you and you're always there. You are so generous. Well, I've found out that kind words has such a powerful impact and that's really surprising to me. I didn't realize that my whole life, but yeah. when you have kind words, even for a perfect stranger, it makes a big difference to them. And uh, if it's sincere and, and it should be, but uh, how how powerful kind words to, are to people. It's just mm -hmm. very astounding to me. And and even when somebody gives you a kind word, you know how it makes you feel. And there are people, and I was blessed to have Kitty Lou, that she was one of those people that made you feel good to be around her. And even people that knew her, you felt good. You may not remember what they said, but you definitely remember how they made you feel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Thank you, Bill. Huh? Avery? <laughs> <laughs> you did such a good job. You did such a good job. I couldn't explain it any better. Mm -hmm. You just did great. I, God's word is just so, it's so fun to study. And it's, it's fun to share. So I love it. I'm glad you guys are all here. Yeah. Or I wouldn't be studying. <laughs> As, as far as seeking God's will, I just I would say uh, just just love God, just just love God and study God and seek everything about him. And he'll put it on your heart what he wants you to do. He'll give you a passion. to. He wouldn't give you a passion to, to help people, Bill, if he didn't want you helping people. That's right. you know, he didn't, he's not in the business of trickery. <laughs> Most people uh, find their gift because they they love God and then God just moves gives them uh, a direction uh, and if you're if you're feeling drawn to an area of service and uh, you don't feel any any negative pull about that then yeah, it's probably God moving you that way and so amen amen anyone else have anything Lou did you want to share or Zoe or Fernando or Ashley not now <laughs> <laughs> As we get 